Hi everybody, my name is Rebecca and I'm the buying director here at Pegazi, which sounds much fancier than it is. It really just means I pick all the products for all you lovely people. Um, I noticed that with obviously all our stores being closed, which sucks, that it's been ages since I've been able to show you guys any products because what I usually do is go to our stores and um, pick all my favourite bits of product and put them on stories and show you guys. But I've just not had a chance to do it because all the stores are shut. So what I'm doing over the next few while is I'm going to try and pick out some of my favourite pieces and do um, some lives on them so that you guys can see like why I love them so much, what you can expect when you order them from our website. So yeah, just to give you a wee bit of update about life at Pegasi, it is hectic. We don't know how because all of our stores are closed and we miss all of our amazing Pegasi team who are at home just now because of bleeding coronavirus. So um, we miss all you guys and we miss all our lovely customers in the stores as well. Um, but yeah, so the stores are closed at the moment and uh, our English stores, hopefully, going by Boris's announcement, will be open, when was that? Was that mid-April? Yeah. And then by Nicola's announcement, our Scottish stores will be open at the end of April. Fingers crossed, guys, because we are ready to have you back. Um, that is for sure. So yeah, we're just really busy here at Pegasi. Um, I am running around like a little chicken trying to pick new products for you guys um, for the coming season but doing that via zoom and uh, photos is really hard to be honest with you it's really really hard for me to pick products that i know you'll love via a video call and then all the when it's all like um, grainy and not working and i'm like oh my god uh, so that is what we're kind of doing at the moment and then we're also trying to improve um, all of our features and everything on the website so we're just really really busy with that and then also yesterday i spoke to two new amazing suppliers that i'm hoping to bring on board with great product so yeah life is just busy but really really good here and we just really miss everyone to be honest kind of like like everyone's missing their family like we're just missing all of our amazing customers and amazing team so we miss you come back <laughs> so today i want to talk to you about this beautiful elwin table lamp so before i go into telling you about it a wee bit of background on like how the process works with me getting a product onto the shelves for you guys is that um in october of each year usually out with coronavirus time i um go over to the far east traveling the world which sounds glamorous but it's not it's exhausting and um i go around um, loads of showrooms and then see loads of beautiful product and then i either have designed it beforehand and then i am um, just approving it or tweaking it or i'm going around seeing things some designs that i really love um that then i can sort of customize or change or pegasify because i'll be making it with you guys in mind making sure you'll love it so this beautiful Elwin table lamp started its life, when would that have been? October 2019, which is pretty mad when you think about it. So October 2019, um, we, I first saw this table lamp. And the reason that um, I selected this table lamp is because I noticed we were kind of lacking like some really big statement, kind of American style hotel glam table lamps that were like, proper statements that filled up loads of spaces um, in your home um, that you know lots of us have like really oversized furniture lovely big tables and sometimes a smaller lamp can just really get lost on it so i want something that had so much presence and um, really was like wow when you saw it so we um, i came across it Elwin and i absolutely loved it and i did all my tweaks and my um, my usual and then what will have happened from there is i'll have also seen a sample um, here back in Glasgow and made sure that it was 100% exactly what I wanted, the right shade, the right cable, the right everything for you guys. And then um, from there, I'll put in an order and it'll have taken all the way until this didn't come in until I think it was November, um, towards the end of November of 2020. So that just tells you guys how long it takes between me first seeing a product and getting it to you. And in that space of time, what generally happens is I get such itchy feet because I'm just so desperate to show everyone all um, the products. So uh, yeah, I'm really excited to be able to show you this one today. So this is the box of the Elwin. It's not exceptionally exciting, but it's got a lovely image of it on the front. And then on the side, it's just got some details about the size of it and, and sort of like the bulbs that it requires. So this lamp's actually um, 60 centimetres in height. So it's really big, really tall. Um, it's 330 millimetres in diameter, so 33 centimetres in diameter. So as I said, loads of presence. And it also takes up to a 60 watt ES bulb 
So I'll go into bulbs later. That's a bit of a boring subject, isn't it? But I'll show you some difference in some bulbs. So um, once you've got this lovely box, so when you buy online, if you're not in a store, which you can't be just now, if you buy online, obviously we would wrap this in an outer box to make sure it's super secure and safe. Um, but let's pretend that I've already taken out that box and then we've got it here. So what happens is we'll open the box and as you can see, lots of lovely protection to make sure it's well cared for in transit. And then we'll just take out this little bit of cardboard that's protecting the top. And then it's got this little bit um, of packaging to make sure that the top of the lamp doesn't get dunted in, tra in transit and it keeps the shade nice and safe. And then from there, guys, um, as much as possible, be really careful when you're removing table lamps from their boxes because sometimes the easiest and most convenient place to pull it from is the lamp holder here, but depending on the lamp, it's really fragile there. So as you're removing it, just make sure that it's, you're being really careful and as soon as you can grab the base of the lamp, make sure you grab that base because you do not want to break the lamp holder. That is not ideal. And then from there, as you can see, we've got loads of protection around this base because it's glass and we want to make sure that it gets you in one piece as long as all the shipping carriers are playing, playing the game they should be and are handling it with care. And then you just take a wee pair of scissors here and we will take off this um, packaging. And as you can see, it is then wrapped in some, uh, just a really thin plastic bag, to be honest. And that's just because we want to make sure that all the dust and everything um, is kept away from it. So I'll take off this shade. I'll unwrap that in a minute. But yeah, so to take off the shade, guys, and all lamps, it's just a little ring. It's pretty, pretty simple in case you've never taken a shade off a lamp. Just a wee ring. And then put that to the side and take the shade off. Oh, generally on all lamps, the shade is packaged upside down in the lamp because it saves space. So, you know, don't make sure you're not putting it in that way with the bulb sticking out the top. And then, as you can see, we can take off this lovely bag here, which is protecting it. And we're left with this gorgeous base. Isn't that a stunner? And um, we're just going to want to unwrap this cable here and make sure that um, we've taken this uh, the plug away from the base because that could uh, scratch it or get in the way. So make sure we've removed that. So there you go. And then, oh, I should have brought my microfiber cloth, but anyway, <laughs> I didn't. So just make sure all the wee polystyrene and little packaging bits are off of the lamp. And then from there, what I would do before I put the shade on the lamp is make sure to take off the shade wrap. So again, this is just to protect the shade uh, in transit from any sort of dust or marks or anything like that. So we'll just cut all of this shade wrap off here. And a nice little story for you guys while I'm doing this is, I don't know if you guys know, but it's family business of which I am the daughter of the owners, which is why do you get into lighting? Goodness knows, but here I am. Uh, 34 years later, still in lighting. And um, when I was younger, this is the kind of thing that, that I would spend my weekends doing, is I would go to the shop with my mum and so would my sister, and we would be doing things like rewrapping shades of shades uh, that we'd taken off the shade wrap for customers and things like that. And then um, my whole life I was in shops kind of doing things to do with lighting, so yeah. So there we go. So with, uh, once you've got the shade unwrapped, obviously this is the most beautiful fabric. So let me talk you through the fabric real quick. So this is a faux silk um, fabric. As you can see, it's got what we call um, a really nice slub in it. And a slub is just that like nice line, the texture running through it. Um, and it's super, super luxurious, this fabric. It's really, really got the most beautiful depth, like really dark, dark, beautiful grey. Um, and as I said, that that beautiful slub in it, which um, just makes it, I don't know, it just reminds me of something in like a hotel in New York or something like that. I absolutely adore it. And then on the inside, uh, I don't know if you guys know this as well, but I literally choose the colour of the inside of all of our shades. Any shade, uh, any table lamp that um, we've chosen and designed, we'll even pick the inside of the shade. So this shade is, as you can see, in a nice soft um, kind of lighter grey. And the reason I've done that is because uh, to get some light out of the shade, because if I lined that in a dark colour, then 
the shade would really not let loads of light out and you actually wouldn't see the slub of the fabric as well as you will just then. So then we'll just put the, pop the shade on here and look at that. Isn't it a stunner now? Whoa, sorry, excuse me. Uh, drop in the shade ring. Isn't it gorgeous? So you just secure the shade on with the shade ring and you'd be much more elegant than I was when I was doing it there. And then I always like to stand back and make sure that I've got the shade on straight, which I think I have. So I absolutely love this lamp when it's complete. So I'm just going to pop it up here so I can have it beside me. But it is such a gorgeous um, shape and it's got so much presence. And look how tall it is um, as well. It's super tall. And I want to talk you through its kind of design features a bit. So Polish chrome, everyone loves. Everyone loves polished chrome. Why would you not? It's beautiful. It's a bit mirrored. It's really like luxurious, really classy. I absolutely love it. So I chose this um, square base because I just really liked like the juxtaposition between how like rounded and lovely and feminine like this glass globe was with like a wee bit more like something a wee bit more angular, a bit more masculine and it kind of really balanced the lamp out beautifully. And then this lamp started life as this piece of glass. So I've literally seen this piece of glass and then added all the extras around it. So the glass, as you can see, is smoked, which is a beautiful finish. It's like a really, I don't know, what would you say? Like, a, it's not really a deep gray. It's just like a lovely smoked gray. And it's got a crackle effect finish on it, as you can see, which I love because sometimes in, in glass lamp bases, you see, you really, really clearly see the rod running through the middle of the lamp, which has the cable in it. And sometimes that's a really nice design feature, but sometimes if you see too much cabling, it's just not, or did you see, sorry, you see too much of the rod, it just doesn't really suit the lamp. So made sure this was smoked and crackled so that that rod through the middle is kind of hidden. And then um, the shade obviously just added really lifts, it gives it loads of height, loads and loads and loads of presence. Um, what else was I going to tell you? So another little fact, if you guys didn't know, is generally how to find the height of, a, sorry, the width of a shade for your lamp. If you've got a base at home and you don't know like what width of shade to put on it, then the width of this shade, the diameter of it, should almost reflect the height of the base. So there's a wee bit of info for you if ever you you knew you didn't know that. Um, some other things just point out is, so I picked clear cable because I try as much as possible to always pick clear cable for all of our uh, floor and table lamps. And that's because I understand that these days, everyone's got loads of different colors of furniture, loads of different styles. And sometimes if you've got a white cable or a black cable, it can be a bit of an eyesore. So as much as I can, I try and pick clear cable, which I have done. And then we've got this beautiful rocker switch here. And that's ideal because I pick the length of that generally. So it's below the back of like the, surface of your um whatever surface you're putting it on of your table but not so far down that you can't get to it the last thing we need is you pulling out miles of cable to find that bleeding switch so there you go that's the wee rocker switch there that turns it on and off so i'm going to put it through in not so much of a room set because let's not pretend we're fancy we are in a very very much working space right now in our studio but um pop it over on this little set here so you can see what it's like size wise compared to um the chair and the little podium we've got so i'll pop it on here and then i'll also remove the scissors so they're not so ugly and then um obviously when you're going to plug them in just make sure that you take off all the plastic and everything on the plug and then we'll plug them in. So what I'm hoping is, I need to check the plugs on and everything, but I want to try a few um, different styles of bulb in here to show you the difference that it makes in the shade depending on kind of the atmosphere you're wanting to create. So in my home, most of my lamps are really, really warm white like most for my bulbs in my home. I like a super cozy atmosphere. I also like my lamps to be really dim. And I don't know if that's because I've spent my whole life in light shops with really bright bulbs everywhere, I don't know. But I personally like a really, really warm and really, really low, bulb, like low um, lumen bulb. So it's got a, a, a lower light output. However, depending on the type of bulb you put in, it can completely change um, this lamp. And the good thing is, 
that these days with LED, you've got so many options of what color of bulb you can use. So you can use anything from a daylight, which is kind of almost a bluey tinge on it, to cool white, which is really crisp and clean, which all our panels in this room are, or you can go warm white, and then you've got all the varying lumens of how bright you want it to be as well. So first of all, I'm just gonna pop in a little 10 watt. Now I've not checked these bulbs are working, so bear with me because I'm hoping they are. Uh, oh, they are, so there you go. So that's the 10 watt warm white bulb. So a 10 watt bulb, well, we need to talk lumens, not watts, but that's probably the equivalent of about a 60 watt um, traditional uh, halogen bulb. Now, this particular lamp can take up to 60 watts. Um, so if you, I know there's some of you guys out there that really like uh, to use halogen bulbs still, and although they're being phased out, you still can use them, it's no problem. And this lamp can take up to 60 watts. But if you want to use an LED, obviously their wattages are much lower. Um, so, you know, you've got a whole breadth of, uh, of bulbs you could use there. So this one's warm white. So you can see the difference of how warm the light is. And when I step away, you can see how it cascades out the top and the bottom. But there's also just a nice, like, little bit coming through the slub. See how you can see um, the shadow of my fingers through the shade? And that's because of the liner that we've picked. We could pick a, a liner that blocked out all the light, so the outer of the shade didn't change at all when it was on. Um, but I really wanted a little bit of light output um, from that. And what I'm also going to do... Is just turn it off quickly again just to show you the difference between what the shade's like on and off so that's it off and then see the wee bit of warmth that's coming out of it really nice so that's probably the kind of bulb i personally would have in my home um but what another bulb I should probably turn it off i've spent my life doing that it's very bad behavior so i'll turn it off be well behaved and i also wanted to show you a lot of people still think that's quite bright so I wanted to also then show you what a like vintage effects bulb would be like. So this is um, an LED version of all those like, you know, cool industrial bulbs. And um, this is just the LED version of that. And it's only four watts. So the last one was 10. This is four. This is a much warmer color of lamp than um, the last one I did. So as you can see, that completely changes it. Um, from the top, if you look, it's like a really really warm it also make, almost makes the inside of the shade like a nice golden color because it's super warm and it's also super low in light so that is perfect for you know if you're watching tv and you just want something that's glowing in the background sometimes you don't want a light a light that's like super bright and glaring against your tv well that bulb's great because it's super warm and low wattage so there you go that's the difference between that guy and then the last one I'm going to show you is actually a 15 watt bulb. So this one is going to be the brightest yet. It's still warm white, so it's not um, it's not got a cool color temperature. It's still warm, but this one's going to be really bright. And I don't know if you can see it. I can totally tell the difference between the bulbs. I don't know if you'll be able to, but on this one, it's the color of the inside of the shade is a much lighter like silver as opposed to the inside of the shade with the last bulb being golden and this bulb because it's so bright it's a little bit lighter in color it would be great if you were like reading beside the lamp or you know you have kids and you're kind of reading them their books or playing with their toys you want to make sure you've got that really bright light in that you can uh, sort of read and doesn't hurt your eyes at all. So that's just my introduction to the beautiful Elwyn lamp. As I said, it only came in at the very end of last year, so it's still pretty new to Pegasi. And um, I absolutely love it. I think it's such a statement. Like, I just imagine walking into a home with beautiful, like, panelling on the walls, a gorgeous sort of mirrored or polished chrome and glass side table, and then, eh, sorry, console table, and then one of these on either side with like some really nice little like show books and stuff and a wee tray with some candles in the middle. And I think it would look honestly just like a hotel somewhere where you'd be like, oh my God. And that's what we all want when we go home, right? You want to go home and be like, I love living here. I love my house. It's so nice. So that's kind of the vibe um, that uh, I wanted when I got this lamp, like something really cool, really classic and timeless. 
And if you want to see it in someone's home, the beautiful Kerry from Renovation 44 collabed with us on this lamp um, and she's put up some photos of it in her home. So if you want to see it in a real life home, because you know, this is just a set, then um, jump onto her page and uh, check it out because it looks incredible the way she styled it. So I hope you've learned uh, lots about lamps and the Elwyn in particular. And then also to say, as the stores are closed and I can't get into them, let me know what products you want me to feature on a live or an IGTV and I will try my very best to get them out of the warehouse and um, show them off for you.